Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ben from Computers, and today we're going to be covering the statistic concept of z-scores. So in this video, we're going to go over the definition of what these scores are, and then we're going to look at some sample problems to help you guys understand this concept. So z-scores are um, used with normal distributions, and they describe how many standard deviations an ob a certain observation from a normal distribution is from the mean. So, there are a couple of things to know before you use uh, z-scores. The first is that um, you're assuming that the population that you're using it with is indeed normal. And the second is that you know what these symbols here mean for the formula here. So, the x represents the one observation that you're going to be dealing with out of the population. The mu represents uh, the mean of your population and then the denominator represents the standard deviation of the population so these three things you must know in order to calculate your z-score so what does the z-score actually tell us? well let's say you have a normal distribution as such uh, the mean's in the middle so let's say in this case the mean is zero and the standard deviation is 1. So, if our observation x was, for example, 1, so x equals 1, and remember that our mu equals 0, and our standard deviation equals 1, then we can calculate our z-score relatively easily. We just plug into the formula. The z-score equals 1 minus 0 over 1, so it's 1. So this z-score tells us how many standard deviations away our, our, um, our observation that we're talking about, this x, is away from the mean for the population. So um, this 1 means that it's one standard deviation away. And the sign of the z-score doesn't even matter. If it's positive, that means it's greater than the mean. And if it's negative, then it's less than the mean. So what kind of information can z-scores give us? Well. If we look back to a standard normal, DB, normal distribution, um, between negative 1 and 1 z-scores, so between um, uh, let one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, lies 68% of your normal distribution. And as you keep going out, the percentages increase, but with diminishing returns. So if you go from negative 2, a z-score of negative 2 to a z-score of 2, that will contain 95% of your data. And if you go from negative 3 to a z-score of 3, that will be virtually all of your data, 99.7% of your data. So, uh, now that we have a general idea of what z-scores are and their applications, let's try a sample problem. So let's say that we're looking at um, the heights. Let's say we're looking at the heights of a certain type of plant. And let's say that we know that the population mean of this plant is 50 inches. And let's say that we know the standard deviation of this population is uh, 10 inches. So um, we're going to cover several types of problems that you can now answer using this information that we cover in this video. The first is, um, let's say I tell you that we observe one plant that is 40 inches, and I want you to calculate the z-score. Well, once again, this is pretty simple. We just use the formula. Our z-score is going to be equal to our observation, which is 40, minus our mean, which is 50, divided by 10. So this would end up being negative 1. So remember that the sign matters. This num uh, z-score tells us that our observation is one d standard deviation below the mean. Alright, let's look at another type of problem. Um, let's say I want to know um, what the middle 60% over here. So this middle 60% of the data, I want to know between what heights the 68% lies. So I want to know um, the middle data, six, that's mid, middle 68 percent. So how can you, uh, what height, how can you calculate these boundary heights? Well, 
you know that the z-scores of those boundary heights are going to be at negative 1 and 1 because we just covered that 68% of the data lies between the z-scores of negative 1 and 1 so you can use this formula that we talked about to back calculate your observation which is your x so you, this time you know your z but you don't know your x so let's start with the negative 1 well actually we already know the negative 1 it's 40 right so let's calculate the 1 using this formula so your z is going to be 1 and it's going to equal your x which you don't know yet minus your mean which is 50 in this case over your standard deviation of 10 and so this ends up being 60 60 inches so then you can tell me well uh, six, the middle 68% of the data lies between 40 inches and, and 60 inches 40 and 60 inches which, both, which have z-scores of negative 1 and 1 respectively so that's an another way that um, you might be asked questions regarding z-scores and normal distributions and then another type of question is something similar for example um, we've covered unknown observations and we've covered unknown z-scores so another type of problem is that they could give you an observation and they can give you the z-score but they can ask you to um, use these to determine either the mean or the standard deviation of the population so this is following a similar line of thought you're just going to plug it into the formula and then find whichever one you're missing so for example let's say that I tell you that let's say let's pretend you don't know um, the standard deviation value. So let's say all I tell you is that the mean of these plants heights are is 50 inches. And then I tell you that, well, uh, you just saw a plant that is 70 inches and that has a z-score of 2. And I want you to use this information to calculate the standard deviation. And you can do this following the exact same train of thought. So we plug in our z-score, our, our x, and our mean into the equation. x, so in this case, our, I shouldn't use x because x is our observation. So let's just use the standard deviation. So we're solving for the standard deviation. So this is just some basic algebra. Uh, 2 times your standard deviation equals 20. So then your standard deviation ends up being 10. So yeah, um, using this z-score formula that we've learned in this video and your knowledge of how data is distributed in normal distribution according to z-scores, you can now answer the several types of problems regarding z-scores.